Hi everyone, it's day two of the revamp of one of the beds in my front yard. Um, I am super sore <laughs> after working on this yesterday. It's a lot of, um, you know, back work and leaning over and things like that. Um, but got it into a good place. Um, I will get up and close and personal with the plants in a moment, but just wanted to give you the perspective standing back a little bit of what it looked like compared to what I started with. Um, the main elements that you can see is that a lot of those kind of statement plants or bigger plants, like I talked about before, number one, number two, number three, um, those now are much more visible and present. And so that makes the design look better. The reason why you always think in terms of odd numbers is because it actually is better for your brain. Um, so for example, if I only had two um, big, huge statement plants in here, then your brain would constantly look at that and say, okay, why aren't those matching? But when you have three, what it does is it accepts the difference because of the odds. So you're always going to think in terms of one plant, three plant, five plant, seven plants, whenever you're putting a design together, because your brain won't try to do this kind of matchy matchy type of function um, that's where you start having problems because the plants won't necessarily grow at the same rate or, or things like that and so you're going to want to try to to not do that as much as possible so when you're purchasing plants or you're getting cuttings or you're starting to put together a design like this think in terms of odd numbers how can i put this together in groupings where it's not going to be something where a a person's brain as they're looking at it um, tries to match everything perfectly again the other thing also to think about is it's also your design if you like the matchy matchy look if you want there to just be two of things then you do you you know don't worry about what other people think or what other people want to have um, it's your garden and so you should do what works for you me personally I, I like the not having so much of that matching matchy type of look um, so that's why I actually put together my designs like this. Okay, so um, let's get up a little closer so that you could see some of the plants and the design a little bit closer. Um, this is, by the way, my haul that I recently got at a, a, a local pottery place. Um, dangerous to go there because, of course, you end up spending a, a ton of cash, <laughs> but um, a lot of fun. <laughs> To be able to go in and buy some of these cute things so i'll be incorporating those in the yard as i start basically with the beginnings of spring cleanup um, so this is the part of the design that actually sits really close to the front door and so that's why it's a little bit lower um, these plants actually will get a lot larger and it's going to be a combination of different colors so there's one that's going to get this bright it gets almost like a bright bright purplish red color almost like a maroon like a wine um, is the best way to describe it plus i also have some fred ives in here those will get a purpley orange there's obviously my favorite little uh aeonium if you watch my other videos you'll see that this is one of the fairy ink that i absolutely love there's actually a little tiny one right here so as that starts to get bigger I'm protecting it a little bit right now but as that starts to get bigger then i will probably move that fred ives out of the way and this will get a little bit taller. They, they tend to kind of bush and then they put out the little babies off to the side. So this will be a big stunner for the front door. Also put in Aeonium Sunburst back here because it gives a, additional pop of color. As you can see, everything is pretty green, gray right now. Um, part of that is because it's the time of year. So this time of year, this area of the garden bed is not receiving a lot of sun, but give it about two months and the sun's going to start blasting this entire area and that's when i start seeing a lot of the colors just super pop out so while it might seem pretty green uh gray right now it's actually going to change very very soon as as we go into the summer months here in san jose um so again i didn't touch some of the bigger plants that i had towards the back i'm trying to get those jades to grow so you can see them behind the aloe those jades to grow and and to actually fill in more um, you can also see one of the silver plants right here 
um, that one as well that turns into a bush and I want to encourage that one to grow. We actually can't buy those in this area so I'm semi-protecting it by having it sitting in between those jades and then eventually once that fills out a little bit more I'll have to move some of these plants around so that it makes space but I really want that plant because that's a stunner when it gets uh, super big it, it's actually quite beautiful and I want to be able to take cuttings off of it and so getting that plant to grow um, is, is something that's really important. So again you can see some of the little pops of color that I put in. Again another one of those fairy ink. This is that kind of wine merlot aeonium. I have no idea what the name is for that. That was just one of the ones I got off of Facebook. And you can see some of the other little plants that are in place. A lot of these I actually didn't touch. They were part of the original design. And I left those because they are super sensitive, like this one will break very easily. These as well. Uh, so I tend to just leave them alone and they will just pop out. Um, this was getting kind of leggy, but I actually kind of liked the way that it was starting to come over the rock. So I left it alone. I just popped in a Fred Ives over the top of it. The Fred Ives is actually covering up a lot of the legginess. So that's another trick that you can use. You don't necessarily have to cut everything back all the time. If you don't like a particular way a plant is looking, just pop something in over the top of it and it will take care of that. I a little bit cleaned up this pot uh, but I have more to go. Um, you can see right here this aeonium is too tall. This stem doesn't look good from the side and so likely what I'll do is I'll cut this off and pop that down lower in and fill this out a little bit more so that it feel, it's just a little fuller and you can't see the soil. It really drives me nuts when I can see the soil at the bottom. So here's more of the design. I brought in some blue elf from the backyard so that's what this one is right here these get some really gorgeous orange blooms on them the hummingbirds absolutely love them so that is going to be super beautiful i popped in a couple of those dinner plate aeoniums right here so those will get big i loved the top of this aloe that i pulled out from the other side of the bed it's doing this kind of interesting yellow variegation or variegation on top of um the, the top of the plant. Not sure why it's doing that, but I think it's absolutely beautiful. So I went ahead and just pulled that over. Um, that will turn into that bush that you saw in the other video. And so I will have to keep this cut back as a result. Um, again, I'm just looking for adding in some additional color as we go into the sunny season. These will get even brighter and brighter and brighter. So a lot of these will turn into just very, you know, dark, the dark Merlot. This will get super hot pink. This will become very orange. The tips of this will get multicolored. So it'll actually look really cool. By the way, if anybody knows the name of this one, <laughs> that would be great to know. I don't even remember planting that, but it's, it's definitely a succulent. I uh, just don't know what the name of it is, so if anybody knows the name of that guy, it would be great to know. Again, more dinner plate aeoniums, and because this jade was not growing very well, I popped in one of those larger aeoniums over here to balance that out so it looks better. You can see, again, it continues on with the tapestry, and here you can see where the tips of this are starting to turn color. So as I mentioned, this one over here, that will start to do the same thing. So it'll look really, really cool. But you can actually see as it's getting stressed, that's what it's doing. And again, I left these alone. They're super fragile. If you pull on them or mess with them at all, then, then these tend to have problems, as you can see. <laughs> so you have to be super careful. And I'll probably just cut that off right there, um, just because it's too leggy and it, it looks a little weird. So again, that's that medicinal aloe. And more. What's really cool is you can start seeing the rock now in the design. Before you couldn't see those rocks that I had put in there. So that's nice to have this push back. Um, 
there's not a lot in this area and the reason why there's not a lot in this area is because I actually back up chairs right here so you, you really won't see a lot of this except from when you're walking up to the front door you'll see it from the side or obviously if you're walking to the side of the bed you would see it but there the chairs block a lot of this plus there's a little table that goes in front of it so I don't worry about too much it, it's actually better to have bulk of this be rock because then there's less maintenance for me over time more of the aeoniums in the back. I used some of the bigger ones. Popped in some of the silver cotyledon because it looks just really beautiful. It kind of offsets. Again, you can see some of the stressing that's starting to happen. And another one of those little weirdo succulents. I don't know what it is. So if anybody knows the name, that would be great. And you can see another tapestry right here. I put in place. Added some more pops of color, my favorite Aeonium in there, some Fred Ives. So you can see I'm kind of repeating that over and over again. Put this Starburst or um, Sunset Aeonium in the back because that variegation really is going to make that pop. And then balanced out that big Euphorbia with the white sap that I don't want to touch right now. Balance that out with some of the plants that I know that are going to get taller. Right now they're a little on the short side but that doesn't actually matter because those will grow very, very quickly and they will balance that out. Once this gets done blooming, then I will go ahead and I will cut that back down. Um, but again, I have to wear protective clothing because when you're cutting any type of euphoria, that's where you're gonna have all sorts of problems. Um, those have a white sap that you can be highly allergic to. Thankfully, it doesn't bother my skin very much, but if you get it in your mouth or your eyes, then you end up having to go to the emergency room. More over here, um, put in a lot of my Blushing Beauty Aeoniums again. Put in some Fred Ives. So you can see those little purple ones right there. Look super beautiful. So again, I'm just thinking about what's tall, what's short. This is kind of bushy. Having some different types of textures in here. How do I have my little pops of color in places where people can see them? Unearthing this poor little guy <laughs> didn't have didn't have much help. Um, I decided to go ahead and leave the Daz Dazzlerium longissimum, which is this one right here, in here for now. I'm going to see if cleaning out the pot helped a little bit. I need to refresh that with some black fire glass and see if that will hopefully help. If not, if I don't get some more growth this spring, then I'll, I will move that one. So that is the redo of the garden bed. Um, next, I will likely have to go after this pot, which is not looking the greatest. It's been here for a while, and so it needs to have some help. And you can see it's getting one of those awful trunks down here. So all I'm going to be doing at that point is just cutting that off and resetting that so that that's lower. I just don't like the look. Uh, it looks kind of funky. You can see it from the back. It just um, It's just getting too tall. So I'll likely just cut that off and reset that back down. Uh, but I'll, in another video, I'll redo this pot and its sister next to it and get those into a better place. Um, so that's it for the succulent garden bed redo. If you like the content, please like and subscribe and send me your comments if you have any questions. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.